One group had tried to take refuge in their temple. It was set on fire, their bodies dumped in a ditch. I have saved my friend's life. I'm proud of me. Although Harvinder's fight for justice and a proper inquiry into the Delhi violence continues, India today feels a more integrated nation. It even has a Sikh Congress party prime minister. That evening, Sikhs and Hindus come together in a strong show of unity. journey for me so far but what's fantastic about this moment is that it's the festival of Diwali which is the festival of light uh, celebrating the victory of good over evil light over dark all across Delhi people were celebrating with the usual Indian disregard for health and safety how much money have you spent on the fire this was the first party I came across, and to say that after two days of reflecting on mob violence it came as a relief would be an understatement. Two families, one Hindu, one Sikh, enjoying the same festival. Politics and religion irrelevant. This is just one street. I don't want to read too much significance into it, but it's hard not to be moved by such a scene. I've returned home to Britain to explore the importance of 84 to Sikhs here and to make some decisions of my own. In Britain, Sikhs watched helplessly as events unfolded in India. They demonstrated in their thousands and welcomed family members who fled the violence. Inderjeet Singh is one of the leaders of the British Sikh community. We protested, we wrote letters, we placed uh, adverts in the daily newspapers. Uh, we did everything we could. It was reacting to the outrage that Sikhs wanted to demonstrate to the world. Mm -hmm. We are a minority. Please look at what's happening to our community. People came from all over the country, placards uh, criticizing the Indian government and drawing attention to the wider world about what was happening. Um, the, um, it, it was a very emotional affair. Over the course of time, what happened to that anger? Has it calmed down? Has it got stronger? Well, none of us can be ang angry for too long. We do calm down, but sometimes the hurt remains. And in India, the, in, uh, in this country, the hurt remained. But Indijit believes that despite the hurt, British Sikhs have moved on and discovered a renewed interest in their faith. Well, the events of 1984 made uh, Sikhs examine their own religion. What is it? Why are we under attack? What are our teachings? You look again more closely at your religion at times like that. And when in looking closer and looking at the world around you, you realize that Sikh values, Sikh teachings have something very positive to offer. Emphasis on human rights and equality of all people, tolerance, real tolerance, respect for other religions. Um, these things are very important in giving a sense of direction to life. So, in a sense, that is something positive that came out of the trauma of 1984. As I near the end of my journey, my head is in a whirl. My questions are now more personal than political. Learning about 1984 has affected me deeply. But what should I do now? Should I be making changes to my life? I'm heading north to meet a young woman who I hope can give me some clarity. 1984 has played a huge part in Ravinda Kaur's life. I find her at the Gatka martial arts class in Doncaster that she runs with her husband. This is Gutka in full swing. They wanted to take the anger they felt at the events of 25 years ago 
and channel it into something positive. Gatka is, as much as it is martial, is very spiritual as well. We come from such a rich history, um, it's criminal to almost leave it behind. Bless us with the ability to be able to carry on this martial art. Bless us with the Leading this class is just part of a dramatic change in Ravinda that started when she read an account of the assault on the Golden Temple. I remember coming downstairs, um, looking at my dad and just falling and crying. And he said, you know, what's wrong? And I said, I cannot believe that something of this magnitude has happened with us. Mm. And I'm, you know, here I am, completely lost. I don't have a clue as to who I am. So before you were baptised in 2005, was your hair short? What was it like? My hair wasn't sh short, but it was curly. Um, you know, I didn't have a turban. I didn't, um, you know, I, I didn't dress you, the way you that you look I more like me? Absolutely. And are you more content now? Prior to, to, to 2005, I'd walk with my hunched shoulders, you know, down the street. And I was almost, to be honest, I was just another brown face in the crowd. To me, that's what I was. Now I walk with a presence. Mm. And that presence is only there, I can say, absolutely most definitely, it's only there because of my turban. I admire Ravinda Kaur for the changes she's made, especially her decision to wear a turban. And I keep thinking of all the people I was told about who were attacked or killed because they wore a turban. I've realised for the first time quite how important it is for a Sikh to be identified as a Sikh. And that's made me question how I look and practise my faith. If I'm honest, I'm a Sikh who's bending the rules to suit herself. I'm avoiding the tougher decisions. And even though I feel guilty, becoming baptised would be a huge challenge. Never being able to cut my hair would be very difficult for me to follow, especially as a woman living in the West doing the job that I do. I don't know whether I will ever get to that point. Who knows? Uh, at the moment, I'm still travelling on that path. I'm not quite there yet. But I've experienced something I never thought would happen. For the first time, I actually feel connected to my full Sikh name. After going on this journey, that's the one significant change that I have really, really felt. I'm so proud of the name that I was given by birth, my proper full Sikh name. And the frustrating part of this is that I can't go back to being just Winder Gorsi, do I have to be Sonia Diol because that's how everybody knows me. But if I could, I would right now change it to just Winder Gorsi, which just makes me feel brilliant inside. As for the events of 1984, the attack on the Golden Temple should never have happened. It was ill thought out and the repercussions were devastating. I used to think 84 was all about politics. Now I think it's about innocent people and the high price they've had to pay. I can never again visit India without feeling the grief and sadness of those I met. It'll always be a beautiful and sacred place, but the bloodstains on the marble have told me a different story, which will be impossible to forget. You can join Sonia Deal on the BBC Asian Network for discussion, music and interviews Friday afternoons from 1.